Hello welcome to MTPK channel. In this video I will create a cloud storage with that NAS server. This is my NAS server, it has all four hard drives. Solid state drive for installing open media vault operating system. The remaining three hard drives will store data. We will merge our three traditional hard drives into one to have a large capacity cloud storage. You need to do six steps to create your own storage cloud. First you install OMV extras for the Open Media Vault NAS server. You connect to the NAS server using SSH. You open the Windows command window enter the command SSH root at IP address. My NAS server IP address is 10.11.32.226. To install OMV extras just copy and paste this command. It takes about 30 seconds to complete the installation. Then you refresh the management page of Open Media Vault and you will find OMV extras in the system menu. After installing OMV Extra we install mergers to merge traditional hard drives into one. You can also create a storage cloud on an individual hard drive and skip this step. But I would recommend you this way to increase your cloud storage. Also this way you can add hard drives to your cloud in the future. After installing Merger FS you will find it in the storage menu. Next, you merge the traditional hard drives into one. My NAS server currently has two 1 terabyte hard drives and one 500 gigabytes hard drive. You name and select all the hard drives you want to merge them together. Let's wait until the end of the video to see how much our cloud storage is. It will take about 5 to 10 minutes to complete so please wait patiently. After merging the hard drives into one, we install Docker and Portainer. System OMV Extra's Docker. Thanks to the installation of OMV Extra in the previous step I was able to install Docker very easily. You just need to click install and wait. After a while you should see Docker installed successfully. To manage and use Docker containers you will need Portainer. So next you install Portainer. You just need to click install and wait. Next, you open the Portainer management page. You will be asked to create a new admin password. Password must be at least 12 characters. So we have installed Docker and Portainer. We will deploy the first container which is File Browser. File Browser helps you to browse NAS server folders. Also you can create new, download, upload files with it. Default username and password are both admin. I set the port to 82 and you need to make sure it doesn't match the one you're using. Bind. Set the host to slash SRV. With volume mapping you configure as I am configuring to be able to access the data hard drives of the NAS server. Deploy the container. Wait a while for the new container to start. Next, you open the management page of file browser. As said in the previous step, the port is 82. 
Default username and password are both admin. Here you can browse up to three traditional NAS hard drives. But the folder we need to care about is called Merger FS. This folder gives us the combined storage capacity of three traditional hard drives. In the folder Merger FS, you create a new folder named App Data. This folder will store your cloud data. This is the path to the App Data folder, and we will use it in the next step. Because my NAS server is behind the router, so I have to forward the port. Port forwarding makes it possible for me to access my cloud storage from anywhere. I open my router's management page. NAS server is using port 80 so I will forward port 81. I will create two new port forwards, 81 and 443. The IP address I will forward to it is the NAS server's IP address. My NAS IP address is 10.11.32.226. First port forwarding is port 81. Second port forwarding is port 443. If port 443 is already in use you can use another port, for example port 444. So I have finished forwarding port 81 and 443 to IP address 10.11.32.226. If port 80 is not in use you can forward this port. We have reached the final step of the video which is also the main step to create a private cloud storage server. You go to Open Media Vault's forum and copy the text file as above. I will put the link in the description of the video for your reference. You open the notepad software available on Windows and paste the text. Next we edit to fit our NAS server. First of all, I will delete all the comment. Next you set up the time zone, each person is in a different time zone, so set it up accordingly. I set the time zone as Asia slash Ho Chi Minh. You update in three different lines. Time zone for next cloud. Time zone for the database. And finally time zone for domain configuration. Next is to set up where to install and store data. In the previous step of this video we created a folder called App Data to store the data of the cloud. So you copy the path and edit it to shoot you. As in my case the path would be Slash SRV slash merger FS slash merger HDD slash app data. The rest of the path you keep. You in turn edit the path for next cloud, database, and domain name. You need to make sure you have fully updated the paths that match your NAS server. If you only use a separate hard drive for your private cloud, then edit the path accordingly. Next is to set up the domain name. I use Doctons to get a free domain name. 
With DuckTunes you can create 5 domains for free. I created a new domain name netvnomv.ducktns.org. Next I will configure this domain for my private cloud. You update the domain name here. Set subdomain as wildcard. Set validation to DuckDNS. You update your email address. With DuckDNS you cannot lack tokens. DuckDNS token. You copy and paste your token here. Thus I finished the text file. Stacks. It's time to create a private storage cloud with Docker. I named it Next Cloud. Next you copy and paste the text here. You make sure that no syntax errors occur. Like here I have a syntax error and I will fix it. Because I use port 443 so I will replace port 444 with port 443. Looks like everything's done. Next you click deploy the stack. There will be three containers created so it will take a while to complete. As you can see there are three new containers created. You pay attention to the swag container first. You open the swag containers log. You wait a moment for your domain to be certified. When you receive the word server ready, it's done. Next you open a new tab of your web browser and enter your domain name. Don't forget to add HTTPS in front of your domain name. A swag welcome page appears, so I'm done with this step. Next I will set up a subdomain for my private cloud hosting. For that, we need the help of file browser. You browse to the swag folder. Next browse to Ginks proxy confs. Here stores a lot of sample configuration files. Our task is to find a sample configuration file for the next cloud subdomain. You download the sample configuration file and rename it. You just need to remove the .sample extension of the file. Next you upload this file. You need to make sure the file is uploaded successfully. Next you edit the default file of Nginx. You download the file. Next use notepad to edit. You add a hashtag in front of the lines as above.
Don't forget to save your changes before closing the file. Then you upload the edited file and replace the old default file with the new one. For the settings to take effect, restart swap. Come on, let's try. Nextcloud.netvnomv.docdns.org. A Nextcloud screen appears, so we are about to succeed. You create a new admin account for Nextcloud. Next is the database configuration. You reopen the text file in the previous step and fill in the information that matches your database. If you change your password or database name, update it correctly. So I have introduced how to install Nextcloud on Open Media Vault. This way you will turn your NAS server into a private storage cloud. With Nextcloud you can access your data anywhere. You can access from your computer or phone. Let's wait and see how much capacity this private storage cloud has. As you can see my cloud storage is 2.2 terabytes. That's because I merged three hard drives into one. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. If you want to know how to install Open Media Vault then watch my previous video.